It has been an enormous blessing in my life to preside at the Easter Vigil, and I have often preached at that liturgy. I also always preside at the solemn Easter morning Mass. But at that Mass, instead of preaching my own words, I have used for years now the words of St. John Chrysostom. His name means golden-throated. He was perhaps one of the greatest preachers who ever presided over a church. He was the Bishop of Antioch and one of the treasures of our tradition. And this morning, on this Easter day, as is my custom, I would like to read his Easter homily. Let all pious men and women, all lovers of God, rejoice in the splendor of this feast. Let the wise servants blissfully enter into the joy of their Lord. Let those who have borne the burden of Lent now receive their pay. And those who have toiled since the first hour, let them now receive their due reward. Let any who came after the third hour be grateful to join in the feast. And those who may have come only after the sixth hour, let them not be afraid of being too late. For the Lord is gracious, and he receives the last even as the first. He gives rest to the one who comes on the eleventh hour, as well as the one who has toiled since the first. Yes, he has pity on the last, and he serves the first. He rewards the one and is generous to the other. He repays the deed and praises the effort. Come, all of you, enter into the joy of your Lord. You the first and you the last receive a like reward. You rich and you poor dance together. You sober and you weaklings celebrate the day. You have kept the fast, and you who have not fasted at all, rejoice today. The table is richly prepared and loaded with food. Enjoy the royal banquet. The calf is a fatted one. Let no one go away hungry. All of you enjoy the banquet of faith. All of you receive riches out of his goodness. Let no one grieve over their poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one weep over their sins today, for pardon has shone forth from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed death by enduring it. He has despoiled hell by going down into its kingdom. He has angered hell by allowing it to taste his flesh. When Isaiah foresaw all this, he cried out, O oh hell, you have been angered by encountering him in the netherworld. Hell is angered because it is frustrated. Hell is angered because it is mocked. Hell is angered because it is destroyed. Hell is angered because it has been reduced to nothing. Hell is angered because it is now captive. It seized a body, and lo, it discovered God. It seized earth. And behold, it encountered heaven. It seized the visible and was overcome by the invisible. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your victory? Christ is risen and you are abolished. 
Christ is risen, and the demons are all cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is set free. Christ is risen, and the tombs are emptied of the dead. For Christ, being raised from the dead, has become the leader and receiver of all those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Hallelujah, 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 hallel